Season 2, Episode 14, The Icarus Factor. (sighs) I'm not going to lie, this is a rough one. The episode opens up with Riker getting offered a promotion to captain of the starship Ares, which is apparently going on a very dangerous mission in the Vega Omicron sector. The Vega Omicron sector. And a civilian advisor is coming on board to brief Riker on the mission. And it turns out to be his dad, Kyle Riker. And apparently it's been 15 years since they last saw each other because they just don't like each other very very much. And somehow Wesley finds out about all this and he's so overexcited, it's insane. He bothers Worf about it as though he'll care and Worf finally tells him to fuck off. Worf! Did you hear about Commander Riker's promotion? Yes. He didn't know his father was coming. He was completely surprised. So? Can you imagine if it was your father? I never knew my father. And I didn't have a father long enough to know him. It is a waste of time to think of such things. I wasn't thinking about it, but everybody needs somebody. Enough! I like how this lady just is like, let me just squeeze by this awkward conversation that I don't want anything to do with. Excuse me. Excuse me. And now Wesley thinks there's something wrong with Worf because of this. So he goes to Geordi about it. Maybe Worf's just not too thrilled with the prospect of losing Commander Riker to a new assignment. I know I'm not. Neither am I. But with Worf, it was something else. Something's really bothering him. You think so, huh? No, Wesley. You zero self-awareness ass. It's you. Stop annoying people. And over in 10 Forward, Kyle Riker shows up, and he's greeted by Dr. Pulaski, because they used to fuck. Wait, what? That's kind of weird. So this whole time Dr. Pulaski's been on the ship, she never thought to mention to Riker that she fucked his dad? Okay, maybe she doesn't have to mention that. But it's odd that she didn't at least tell him that she knows him. It also seems like a pretty small galaxy, doesn't it? I mean, what are the odds that she would end up working for the son of somebody she used to bang? I don't know. Just seems kind of weird. And Wesley somehow manages to convince Geordi and Data that something really is bothering Worf. He also convinces them to try to do something about it. So Data tries to extend an olive branch. Excuse me, Lieutenant. You seem to have lost the will to communicate with others. You have friends here. We... We care about you. Why, just recently, Jordy Wesley and I were saying... With... All due respect. Be gone! Sir. Okay, I guess maybe he is a little bit more irritable than usual. And after this, Worf kind of randomly goes to see Commander Riker, and he requests to go along with Riker on the Ares. Now, there is something bothering Worf, but it has nothing to do with Riker. I have no idea what the point of this scene is. He's demonstrating this extreme loyalty to Riker, and it's very strange. And then we jump to a scene where Riker is talking to his dad, and it was at this point that I realized the entire episode is basically just a random smattering of conversations between two people. Picard talks to Riker. Riker talks to his dad. Wesley talks to Worf. Worf talks to Riker. Riker talks to Troy. Troy talks to Riker's dad. Uh, It's some of the most inane bullshit I've ever seen. It's all just filler. It feels like they wrote a 20-minute episode, and then they had to pad the shit out of it with some random conversations. There's even a scene where Picard is talking to Riker about the Ares, and he mentions that the first officer of the Ares is fluent in over 40 languages. And this will apparently be a big advantage to Riker on this mission he's going on. First of all, how? The Universal Translator renders the linguistic ability of this person pretty moot, I would think. And second of all, who gives a shit? This has nothing to do with anything. Spoiler alert. Riker isn't leaving the ship, so 
Why are we delving into the abilities of this character we never meet? It's fucking weird. Anyway, Riker is talking to his dad, and they fucking hate each other. And now we jump to a scene where Kyle Riker is talking to Troy. I mean, it's just laughable at this point. And he explains that he and his son have one thing in common. They both have good taste in women. Ugh. So basically this fuckhead just said, Hey, I know my son banged you, and I'd bang you too. I mean, it's fucking horrendous. And Troy, understandably, just shoots daggers at him. And then we go to a scene where Riker and his dad are talking again. I mean, didn't we just do this? Holy shit. (sighs) And up until this point, Kyle Riker has been kind of reasonable with his son. He seems like he's trying to reach out. But in this conversation, he says this. Please, spare me the pain of your childhood. I hung in for 13 years. If that wasn't enough, it's just too bad. What the fuck? I mean, if 13 years is the maximum he was willing to give his son, why the fuck is he pretending like he gives a shit now? What an asshole this dude is. I'm glad Sergeant Murtaugh blew him up. And elsewhere, Wesley finally finds out what's bothering Worf, and it turns out that he's reached the age of Klingon ascension. So basically, Worf is bummed out that there's no other Klingons to come to his bar mitzvah. So Wesley and the gang decide to throw him a party, and they invite him to the holodeck, where some holographic Klingons stab him in the tits, and he fucking loves it. And after he comes, he says thank you, as you do. I mean, what a refreshing scene this was. Something actually kind of happened that wasn't a conversation between two seemingly random people. But that's short-lived because we, right after this, we cut to a scene where Riker's talking to Pulaski. And she tells him to jettison his emotional baggage as though it's all his fault. For the life of me, I can't figure out anything Riker has done wrong in this conflict with his father. But she's acting like this is a two-way street. So not only did she bang his dad, but now she's trivializing the fact that he was basically abandoned by him. I mean, can we have Dr. Crusher back? I mean, holy shit. And then another conversation between Riker and his dad. You know, it doesn't even seem like they're bothering to change the setting for these scenes. It looks like they're all happening in the same goddamn room. Anyway, he says he's accepting the promotion and that he challenges his dad to some kind of contest called Anbo Jitsu. And Dr. Pulaski is against the idea, saying it's barbaric, despite the fact that she just a few minutes ago attended Worf's ceremony where he gets his nipples shot out of his asshole by some 24th century cattle prod. It's exasperating. Anyway, here's the fight. I mean, look at this shit. Anbo Jitsu, the ultimate evolution in the martial arts. I remember my early lessons. You can never get used to the sightless factor or to losing. True. The ultimate evolution in martial arts. I mean, how exactly would you apply this practically? Because to me, it looks like two blindfolded dickheads dressed up like American gladiators swinging a giant Q-tip at each other. How are you going to stop a mugger with this shit? You're going to get sliced and diced. (sighs) Anyway, they begin fighting and airing their grievances, except in between, they keep speaking Japanese. I mean, that's pretty weird. I'm not sure if it's racially insensitive, but it's something. Something is wrong. I know that. And Riker's dad ends up winning by cheating. He basically sweeps the leg, and then they kiss and make up. And after all that, 
Hilariously, Riker turns down the promotion and stays on the Enterprise. And that's how the episode ends. What a shit show. I mean, in terms of entertainment value, this might be the worst episode I've talked about. It's nothing but a bunch of random conversations, half of which lead to nowhere. It's like a soap opera. It's 80% padding, trying to fill out the runtime. It's almost like when you're fucking around in Mass Effect and you're trying to make sure you talk to every NPC and every scene ends with, I should go. That's what this is like. I mean, it's just bizarre. Also, I guess it's kind of worth noting that there's a there's sort of a subplot in this episode where there's sort of a problem with the engines, I guess. And Data has a suggestion on how to fix it. And for some reason, they ask Starfleet Command about it. And they say, just do what Data says. <laughs> so, and that, that's it. That's the entire thing. It takes about 30 seconds in the whole episode. So in case you were wondering if there really is a lot of padding in this episode, I think that's just proof. Because it has nothing to do with anything, and it's just easily solved. Also, there's a scene where Riker has his comm badge on crooked. So I guess his dad is such a distraction to him that he can't even put his uniform on properly. Ugh, it's exhausting. What a shitty episode. And I have a feeling that this is going to turn out to be a pretty shitty video. So, there's that. Anyway, that's all I got for now. Just remember that if your dad shows up to your work and wants a pat on the back for sticking around for the first 13 years of your life, try not to challenge him to a Power Rangers Q-tip fight. You know, because it's the ultimate evolution in martial arts. Ah, uh, she's the only gotcha boss.